let, let, let's do two parts of this, okay? Let's start, in terms of the NFL, with the Devontae Adams deal. Because I do think that Colin was kind of onto something. And if you remember how what we were telling you about the Aaron Rodgers deal, and look, I think, Bayer, you pay as much attention to it as anybody. One, you lost your quarterback in Russell Wilson. When I say you're, he's a big Seahawks fan if, you're just, if you haven't heard Dan's work. Okay, plus he's from the state of Wisconsin. He knows everybody there. And he has his own weekend show as well as working with us and doing my show as well. And and so he knows what's going on. Like, the narrative was from Green Bay. And you tell me if I'm wrong, guys. Season gets over. Aaron stayed a couple extra days in Green Bay. And the feeling was they had made plans. They wanted to integrate him into their plans for coaching staff hires, for personnel, and then, obviously, for a new reworked contract, right? And then you fast forward, and we were it, it, it continued to build where people were like, I think Aaron Rodgers is staying, and one of the reasons I think he's staying is he's working with the front office, and they've been planning for the future, right? Okay, now Devontae Adams gets traded to the Raiders. And, and for the record, I actually think, it, potentially, it's a great trade for the Packers and a terrible trade for the Raiders. I, I'll get to why in a second. Because it's, it's like the, um, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, oh, he was with the Raiders. And he's a great defensive player. Now he's with the Chargers. But he went to the Bears. Khalil and Mack. Like, uh, Khalil Mack. It's like the Khalil Mack trade in reverse. right? And, and because you're not just trading Devontae Adams, you're trading what Devontae Adams wants in his contract. And I know it's not what it was announced to be initially, but still, 20 something million dollars per year for, for a wide receiver getting up on 30 years old, and you can say Devontae Adams is the best wide receiver in the league. I don't actually think you're going to get a ton of people who agree with that inside the league. He's very good, okay, but he's not a burner. He, does, he misses a couple games a year, and he's not going to get faster as he gets older. And, oh, yeah, by the way, again, this is more in theory. In theory, you take all of that money and those draft picks, and you reinvest it into the wide receiving pool, into the offensive line pool, and you'll be fine. Like Again, that's in theory. We'll see how it plays out for the Packers because it's not just you're not just getting the picks. You're getting the relief on your cap number. But when you see that, when you hear all of these things about Aaron Rodgers being part of the planning, then he gets a new contract. Then Devontae Adams is franchise tag, but then ultimately they trade him. And then Devontae Adams doesn't, thank Aaron Rodgers specifically in his Instagram post, tells you all you need to know about what happened in Green Bay. And again, I'm not sure it's the worst decision on earth. I think it may end up being a very smart decision, but it does feel kind of cold and calculated by Aaron Rodgers that he was like, hey, look, if there's only one torch, I'll keep it and we'll vote Devontae off the island. It, it, have you ever, you guys watched Survivor? I told you guys, my son has watched every season of Survivor, and there's always that one critical scene where somebody turns on somebody in their alliance. That yes. feels like that's what happened here. Yep. Is that a good read, Byer? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yes, because you have those alliances for so long, and then you realize that your alliance, the person in your alliance, is actually the biggest threat to you. Correct. So you have to do something about it. Here's what I've learned about people. And I have some really close friends in this business who I admire a great deal. And I think are, are good people. At the end of the day, 99.9% of us are survivalists at heart. And if it's him or me, it ain't going to be me. No and doubt. we'll say, right? And I think th- that's what Aaron, And I'm not like, this will sound like, well, you're being critical of Aaron Rodgers. Maybe. But like, if I'm Aaron Rodgers... And somebody goes, hey, look, you could stay and make $50 million a year and have your own team. You don't have to move. You don't have to go to a new team. Still, you're, you're, you don't have to be the guy who leaves Green Bay or whatever. The only thing you got to sacrifice is, like, we can't bring Devontae back at that money, too. It just doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't work on the books. You know? I, I don't necessarily blame him. I don't think it's the worst thing on earth. Like, why do I have to move to Denver and then meet a bunch of new guys? When I, I got a set-up team here, I, I kind of get to call my shots. I'm the guy. They kiss my butt. They bring me in. They sign my wide receivers that I want. They do what I want now. But I, I, at the end of the day, most people, not everybody, there are, there, there are the very rare person that will sacrifice themselves. And, and like, look, I'll, I was, at, I was at, at CBS after my first year. And 
I had one moment where it, it hadn't gone great, um, but I thought generally I did I exceeded anything that they thought in terms of bringing me in. I didn't know if they liked me, didn't like me. I didn't care. I had another friend whose contract was up at the place I had previously worked, and he called me. He's like, "Hey man, can you help me out? I'm trying to. I'd love to work with you again, and we would be great together." And I had other friends like, "Dude, don't do it." Don't do it. You know, there's only, there's only, you know, you, you can't have more mouths to feed. It's a competitor. Why would you? And my thing has always been like, I don't care. Like, if you're good enough, you're good enough. I don't care. You know, fast forward six months later, he doesn't come over. He stays where he is. And then, you know, he, he acts like I wasn't a good teammate about it. That's, that's not accurate. Like, but, you know, it's like if Troy Aikman, I have no doubt that Troy Aikman got the ESPN deal and then said like, hey, I want you to bring Joe Buck, take care of Joe Buck. But if they would have said, like, hey, Troy, listen, here's the deal. We're going to pay you $20 million instead of 18 but that taps us out. We're out of the Joe Buck business. Do you think he would have gone, like, nah, I can't do it. Can't do it. Maybe. But the, ver- the likelihood is, what, 95, 98, 99% of the people? What do you think, Dan Byer? What would your, be your estimation that yeah. at the end of the day, it is they do are about themselves? Yes. One of the first bits of advice I was given to in entering this profession was always look out for number one. Yeah, here's, I got one for you. Everybody hates everybody, just so you know. Sure. <laughs> that's, a, that's my, my buddy gave that to me. But he's like, you know, everybody hates everybody. It's like, I don't hate everybody. Well, everybody hates you. Uh, we did, what did I do wrong? It doesn't really matter. Just people, everybody hates everybody. They'll find something you, they don't like, and they'll use that, even though there's 50 million things that you did, did they like. Okay. Yes. But, yes, at the end of the day, take care of you. At the end of the day, everybody hates everybody. And I think that's what happened in Green Bay. I think that's why Devontae is ticked, that he thought he had an alliance with Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers was secretly aligned with the Green Bay Packers. Another thing, too, about this business, the old cliche about um, keep your uh, friends close, your enemies closer. I, I think the people that have this business wired are the people that do just that. Like they, they, they get the people that are most the biggest threats in the building and they, they cuddle up to them, but they would stab them in the back at any given time. I've known dozens of people in this business that do that. And it's it's consistent with what you're saying, but keep your keep your enemies closest. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a saying, but I don't know if that's actually, I don't know if that actually works. I, I think it's just you know you build a network and you keep relationships and establish relationships because you just never know. You know, you treat everybody good. It's like it's like th- that's my favorite thing about people who come at me on social media. Like that's fine, but you can also, uh, uh. The, the, that that's it's totally fine, but you can also ask anybody who's worked with me, and they will tell you that it doesn't matter if you're a woman, a man, a black, white, Mexican, mixed race. It doesn't matter. I, I treat everybody the same. I treat everybody like crap, and then it doesn't doesn't actually affect me. Then everybody hates you, so it's not that big a deal. It's a joke. These are, <laughs> these, are these are these are these are bad jokes. I don't know where where it turned exactly with the Devonte uh, Aaron Rodgers. Maybe this was brewing for a while, but remember it was it was strange when Aaron Rodgers early on, right after the season ended, was talking about how you know I, I need to see how thing how things play out with Devonte. He he said that a couple times, and then remember he once said once said that uh, you know there's this thing called the franchise tag, and I don't know if he was saying yeah. it in jest, but I'm thinking why is he talking about Devonte's money? That seems just out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing? You were saying, Dan? No, I just agree 1 million percent with what Jason was saying. When Rodgers said that, uh, it was kind of out of nowhere. And Rodgers even, I think, admitted in the piece, I'm sure it was to Pat McAfee, because uh, it's usually the time we hear from Rodgers, is that uh, he knew that he probably shouldn't be saying it. But he did anyway. Did you remember this? Do you remember this one? Um, last summer? Uh, when he said it would be a dream to play with Derek Carr, I'm a Packer for now, mm-hmm. until the point where uh, we make that decision, we'll see what happens. Like, look, Aaron Rodgers is not a perfect person, and he has been in some ways fairly and in some ways unfairly criticized by people who don't know him at all or don't know him really well. 
And I'm not going to sit here and tell you we're best friends or we were friends for a long time. There was a period of time in which we were we were friends. We were friendly. We have I have not communicated with him in a, in a while. Um, but one of the and I don't know if this is why we don't communicate anymore. If it's me or if it's just he's into the McAfee thing. I don't know what it is. But I do know that during my time as a friend with him, and then everything I've observed, he is a you're either all in. Or you're out, right? Can we all, do we all kind of agree on that, right? Like that, that's his thing. You're either all in on him and you're all about Aaron and every, like that's why he goes to Mac. McAfee never pushes back on the things that he says or things that he does. So you're either all in or you're out. Is that a buyer? Is that a, is sure. that a fair assumption? Sure. Okay. If you're all in on Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers and, and I don't know if it's insecurity if it's confidence or if it's just like, hey, dude, what? If you're Aaron Rodgers and you're hiking Machu Picchu last summer with your ponytail and your beard and, you know, you got the peyote working and you look at your phone and like, did you guys see this quote? It would be a dream to play with Derek Carr. Like, how do you think that lands with Aaron Rodgers? How do you, how do you think that, that lands with Aaron Rodgers? Right? I mean, imagine if Rob Gronkowski was like, you know, it would be a dream to play with Dak Prescott. Like, how, what do you think? How do you think Tom, Tom Brady's like, excuse me? What? Huh? Like, bro, you retired, and I got you out of retirement, threw you the ball in the Super Bowl, won you another ring. Like, that ain't how we, how we go. I would guess that the beginning of the end of their relationship was that quote. Because Aaron wants, Aaron is a guy who, you want to talk about a guy who wants loyalty. He wants people that are 100% loyal. Making dreams come true is Aaron Rodgers. Yes, making dreams come true. Oh, oh, you, you dreamed about playing with Derek Carr. We can make that happen. We can make that happen. Sure, why not? 